I'm the gargoyle of the University of Chicago. My name is Frona Bilax. I'm going to tell you about Hyde Park. Here's the map. First there is some history that we have to get through. A guy named Paul Cornell bought 300 acres in 1853 between 51st and 55th streets. He'd arrived in Chicago in 1847 with $1.50 in his pocket and was promptly robbed. But he ultimately succeeded. He deeded 60 acres to the Illinois Central Railroad. He wanted people to have access to his land so he could sell it. This required a passenger station. He arranged for the grid pattern to be imposed on the prairie and built a watch factory at Grand Crossing. The first residents were his friends and relatives. Here's a house that was built before the fire. The innovation that started in Chicago was balloon framing. Previous buildings required massive beams with eight 12-inch corner beams put together with the mortise and tendon method. It required many strong men to assemble. Siding wood was added to studs in the outer framing. A person had to be very clever at woodworking. With balloon framing, two by fours were lighter and one person could do it. Cheap, machine-made nails and a power-driven circular saw cut the wood. Here's a house from after the fire. This was a productive period for house building in Hyde Park. Some famous architects worked here, like the Beeman brothers who built Pullman houses. Van Doren Shaw designed dozens of houses in this area. He also constructed Ragdale, a house in Lake Forest that has been turned into an artist colony. The University of Chicago was started in 1892 with Rockefeller money and Marshall Fields land. It had a theological seminary and was religious at first. The board members wanted to allude to colleges in Oxford and Cambridge which are medieval in origin. This upstart, the United States, had no architecture of its own so it borrowed Gothic. The early buildings are Neo-Gothic. Here's the quadrangle with its turrets and long, thin windows. Henry Ives Cobb designed most of these. He studied at Massachusetts Institute of Technology and earned an engineering degree from Harvard. Here is Cobb Hall. It is his first building. It has gables, dormers, steep roofs and projecting bay windows supported on brackets. Shepley, Roughton and Coolidge created Ida Noyes Hall in 1916. Back then women were excluded from social and recreational facilities, though they were enrolled. They hung out in Noyes Hall. When that changed in 1955, it became a general student center. The same firm built William Rainey Harper Memorial Library in 1912. It has two massive towers and second-story bridges that link the library to reading rooms. This building has the coat of arms. It holds 3.5 million volumes. Shepley, Roughton and Coolidge also designed the tower group. I live here. Coolidge and Hodgden designed the Joseph Bond Chapel in 1926. This is a beautifully ornamented gem with Christian themes. There are angels, devils, Adam and Eve inside and out. I think this is where my human saw Muddy Water and Otis Spawn play. It was a small and intimate venue. Riddle and Riddle, Nagel Hartray designed Chicago Theological Seminary in 1926. Bertram Grosvenor Goodhue designed Rockefeller Memorial Chapel in 1928. It is non-denominational and the centerpiece of the campus. Graduates graduate in it. The limestone church has buttresses and arches so typical of Gothic Revival architecture. Goodhue was a major proponent of modern Gothic with arts and crafts touches. Unlike authentic Gothic churches, it has wide bays and tall clerestory windows over low side dials. There is a statue of Goodhue holding the chapel on the east transept wall. Oriental Institute was constructed by Mayers, Murray and Phillips in 1931. The architecture has Art Deco features in addition to Gothic gables, bays and buttresses. Hola Bird, Rout and Berge designed the Levi Hall in 1948. That ends the first era of collegiate Gothic with a simplified Art Deco leaning. Then an architect created an American style. Roby House by Frank Lloyd Wright is an example of his prairie style, built out, not up, with low-hipped roof forms. 
Frederick Roby was a bike manufacturer. He and his wife, Mary, commissioned the house in 1910. It is considered one of the most important modern houses, a national landmark with long bands of 175 art glass windows and doors. The basic form consists to two massive rectangular forms that meet in a third smaller square form. There are no downspouts to the gutters. The water pours out of stubs to drains in the ground or balcony floors. Costing $60,000, constructed with Roman brick and matching mortar, limestone trim, low ceilings, natural light, it is Wright's prairie masterpiece of asymmetry. When people felt the need to demolish it, he defended it and it was successfully restored. Now the University of Chicago manages it with the Frank Lloyd Wright Trust. Roby House has central vacuum, three-car garage and a pump-driven water heating system. Roby only lived in it for 18 months before declaring bankruptcy over his father's debts and divorcing his wife. Wright has several houses in Hyde Park. Another house on 5132 Woodlawn is from 1897. It is the Isidore Heller House. And it is for sale at $1.5 million. Earlier than the Roby House, it also has the band of windows tucked under low horizontal eaves. The frieze by Richard Bach reminds us of Louis Sullivan's ornamentation. Again, Wright used horizontal divisions of the wall plane. Aero Saarinen designed the Laird Law Quadrangle in 1959. Four buildings cluster around a law theme. These are modern, lean and simple designs. Joseph Regenstein Library was designed by Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill, 1967-70. Walter Netsch was the main architect on this building. He also designed University Hall at University of Illinois Chicago and most of the buildings of that East Campus. His contribution was a field theory which rotates squares into complex shapes. I. W. Colburn and Associates along with Schmidt Garden and Erickson created the Cummings Life Science Center in 1973. It is the tallest building on campus with 40 red brick towers which act as exhaust ducts that remind us of medieval chimney stacks. Smart Museum of Art and Cochrane Woods Art Center was constructed by Edward Larrabee Barnes in 1974. It has Indiana limestone, is unadorned and modernist. The concept was to display art rather than distract the public with architecture. The Duchaswa Center for Advanced Medicine was built by Tsoi, Kobus and Associates in 1996. It is an adult outpatient hospital with 26 specialties. There is a curved entrance for drive-up services. The second-story walkway is covered. Tall, thin windows in a block jut out while one wall of windows is recessed. Windows in one direction on different facades are wider on top. It makes an interesting facade with beige stone. Caesar Pelli designed the Gerald Ratner Athletic Center in 2001. There is a fitness center and a pool in it. Ricardo Ligerta built the Max Palavsky Residential Commons in 2002. This is the most colorful building on campus. Entrances are orange, pink, purple and yellow with large windows. Zimmer Gunn Silfroska built the Gwyn and Jules Knapp Center for Biomedical Research in 2009. The laboratories are surrounded by glass. There are meeting rooms so staff can run problems by people in other specialties. The insides are open and the interior wall is transparent for 10 stories above a limestone base. It's a striking building with varied columns of glass shapes and textures. This is my human in front of the Pritzker Nano Fabrication Clean Room in the Knapp Center's basement. This is the view from the 10th floor of the Knapp Center. Helmut Jan and Murphy created this West Campus Utility Plant in 2010. This plant is machine run largely without humans. It won awards. The pumps, boilers, cooling towers and chillers are all different colors. It can be expanded as need arises. His firm also built the South Campus Chiller Plant in 2010. It generates chilled water and steam for the south and east sides of the campus. It is a minimalist masterpiece of total transparency, like a rounded, crystal toaster. 
and Helmut Jan designed the Joe Enrica Mansueto Library in 2011. On the outside, the building is an elliptical glass dome with solar control glass. Inside, a person requests a book. Books are in metal bins, in racks 50 feet high with barcodes. A robotic crane retrieves the book in three minutes. The days of wandering in the stacks and finding other related materials are over. 3.5 million volumes occupy one-seventh of the space required by regular stacks. The library won awards. Raphael Vinelli built the award-winning Charles Harper University of Chicago Booth School of Business in 2004. This five-story graduate, academic facility has cantilevered, exterior walls and horizontal massing, like the Roby House across from it. There is a winter garden framed in structural steel and entirely clad in glass. The ceiling's central hall looks like lily pads. The architect is referencing the Johnson administration building in Racine by Frank Lloyd Wright. In 2013 Vinelli also designed the Center for Care and Discovery. Within its 10 stories, this flagship hospital has private rooms and 436 beds with enough space for overnight families, 52 intensive care beds, advanced imaging, 23 operating rooms with hybrid and robotic procedures and a sky lobby central reception. Todd Williams and Billy Jean created the Rava and David Logan Center for the Arts in 2012. Students and visiting artists have a space to create music, dance and theater stagecraft. It has horizontal stone slabs, large glass openings, cantilevered protrusions, limestone, and incredible height. There are environmental issues addressed in the architecture. Thus, it won awards. My Human Got a Tour of the Facility by Todd Williams Hawk and James Carpenter designed the William Eckhard Research Center in 2015. The building has variable air volume, total energy wheel technology, low-flow flume hoods, reduced air change rates when unoccupied, variable speed exhaust, runaround heat recovery, modular heat pump chillers, radiant floor heating and active chilled beams. Those are very technical terms but basically they mean that the building saves energy while being comfortable. The building demonstrates leadership in energy and environmental design. Some of these innovations are only in laboratories. Studio Gang built the Campus North Residential Commons in 2016. The windows have frit patterns etched into them so birds do not fly into them. A green roof uses most of the rainfall but any excess goes to water landscape plants. Precast concrete panels have a variety of sizes. It is a very innovative building for energy use. The University of Chicago has fostered 87 Nobel laureates. Its 15,000 students have a variety of eating establishments like Valois and the Medici where they mingle with professors. Hyde Park is essentially a complete community with all the amenities a person needs. It resembles a European community. The Dusable Museum is there. Many famous people have lived there including Saul Bellow, Edna Ferber, Ben Hecht, Clarence Darrow, Harold Washington, Dick Gregory, Arne Duncan, and Barack Obama. Enrico Fermi set off the first nuclear chain reaction under the university's staff football field in 1942. In 1930 Hyde Park was a resort area with hotels Windamor and Shorehill. During the Great Depression these were changed to apartment buildings. With occupancy rates of 30% by the mid-1960s, neighbors were concerned. By 1930 the buildings that had been built for the 1873 fair had deteriorated. They did not have indoor plumbing or other modern conveniences. Walk-up apartment buildings and older single-family homes had been converted into illegal units. African Americans had moved into the area after restrictive covenants were declared unconstitutional in 1948. Committees were formed to look into the increasing problems of juvenile delinquency and crime. The university built prefab housing units for the veterans and their families who became students under the GI Bill. The university and its properties were valued in the many millions of dollars. The university also worried about the safety of its students and professors. 
It bought properties to house undergraduate and graduate students, married and unmarried. Otherwise they would choose another university without these problems. Building cited for demolition met with opposition. People argued that they were not blighted. Buildings not owned by the university between 55th and 56th streets and between Cottage Grove and Ellis were demolished by order of the Southwest Hyde Park Redevelopment Corporation, starting in 1955. Some older houses were saved. Eventually there was an urban renewal plan in 1958 by the city council. It included 60 units for the elderly. First, 600 buildings were demolished over five years. Landlords raised the rents and African Americans could not afford to live there. People complained that Hyde Park solved their problem so-so economically but the problems moved to the neighborhood next door. Some said that Hyde Park reimposed racial covenants. It was controversial, but it was done. At Burnham and 55th there is a famous promontory point designed by Caldwell. He created a peninsula in 1926. A fountain was added in 1939 with fire pits and a pedestrian tunnel under Lakeshore Drive. George Lucas married Melody Hobson at the point in 2013. Hyde Park architecture stretches from before the fire into the current period. The university needed buildings for its students and professors. It has wealthy donors who paid to establish buildings with a particular educational focus. Famous architects rose to the challenge. Some parts had to be demolished but newer, better designed and fabulous edifices replaced them. Still, many remodeled and original buildings remind us of the history of Chicago 